can live what you saying on them beats. Real talk. One, two, three. Uh -huh. You don't really want to fuck. Yo, it's Clinton the Hip Hop Hercules, the Hip Hop Historian. And I'm here to talk to you about the relationship between hip hop and high end fashion and how it has evolved throughout time. Free promotions and all that. What's up? Hip hop in the 80s, the golden era near the beginning, was all about sports fashion. B boys had to be comfortable to break, so they wore track suits and tennis shoes. Shout out to Adidas for basically owning that entire realm of the art. That was cats like Run DMC, Cold Crush, and the Furious Five that were endorsing and growing the sales of soccer and general athletic apparel companies by spreading the trend through the entire urban community. One day, an album called Paid in Full came out, and the dopest DJ MC partnership were balling on the front cover in personalized Gucci sweat. Suits. That was when high fashion was really entered into the game. I'm not going to talk about the rise of jewelry, real or urban wear, the jersey fad, you know, jewelry or nothing like that. I want this to be about major partnerships and the free promoter status hip hop artists have become accustomed to. Jay Z came out in '96 wearing the Cox Motif and drinking Cristal. The French clothing company and the high end French champagne line, hence sales start skyrocketing. Hove met with both companies and was immediately turned around. Or having been offered some free gear or bullshit, but a stern no to any form of promotional deal or collaboration. When the operations manager, Cristal, was asked about the company's affiliation with the Bling lifestyle, he said, what can we do? We can't forbid people from buying it. That started a pretty successful boycott for hip-hop artists from what became their music genre's trademark drink. Through the 90s, hip-hop really held to a pretty specific look. The urban culture was easily recognized and obviously mimicked by white kids in the suburbs. Baggy shit was cool. Dickies, Carhartts, relatively inexpensive companies were the most popular. Minds like Russell Simmons and Damon John were genius enough to capitalize on creating clothing and accessory lines that embodied the hip-hop lifestyle. Then artists decided, hell, we are icons. Kids are wearing the companies we are, so why not come out with our own? and profit off that. Vocal, Aku, Rockaware, Sean John, BBC, and tons more rows. Some made liquid off of it, and some made to the sales racks and TJ Maxx. What seemed like overnight, the new wave of young artists at the beginning of the millennium felt the need to wear money on their clothes. Hip-hop had a connection of money almost right off the bat as a part of the escape from the ghetto and the need to rise above the unfortunate struggles. But who knew that Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Fendi, and Prada would be the only belts being worn, jackets being rocked, and all that. Yeah, in the last few years, some of the top artists have been making their own lines like Big Sean, Wiz Khalifa, and Lil Wayne. But aside from high-end fashion, there is also the massive presence of urban and even skate companies like Mark Echo, 10 Deep, Diamond Supply, Defiant, and tons more. Clothing sites like Karma Loop, Dr. J's, Jimmy Jazz have become the ultimate stockhouses for these companies, bringing in extreme profit from hip-hop fans. Because of the undeniable popularity of the hip-hop business and its effect on the youth, companies now will, not always or often, but sometimes, create collaborations with rappers. Rick Ross had his Reebok deal, Jay Electronica, Lupe, and Lil Wayne made money off of Mountain Dew advertisements, Jay-Z came out with an entire line of clothing at the top fashion outlet, Barney's New York City, of course the most ranted about partnership by the collaborator himself, Kanye West and Nike have created two sneakers together. Beats by Dre created by Doc Dre with the help of Jimmy Iovine and Monster, Audio is the top sold headphone line in the world. Today, hip hop is high end fashion. If it is something clothing or even jewel related that is expensive, then it will somehow be stitched or stuck onto a piece of clothing and then tailored several times to make a clothing collection of some sort. Over the last two years, leather and animal prints have exploded in the clothing industry for European college students, but even more for rappers, R&B singers, and even some athletes. A hoodie with waffle sleeves and entire crocodile chest is the shit. A pair of le leather jogging pants with spiker studs somewhat on them is the shit, and that's the commercial rappers. Jay-Z and Kanye West are criticized about the high prices of their products, but the same people interested in that style of clothing are flushing money into Versace and all the European-based clothing conglomerates. There needs to be a way that hip-hop artists are not extorted by these massive companies, but create profitable collaborations that they deserve because of the constant and powerful promotion value they attain. Or they could just stop the free work, stop spending money on companies that make money off of them, make your own line, or just rock the American-made dope streetwear that have flooded the streets. That's my take. Coming from the hip hop Hercules. What's up? On the knees and live what you saying on the